Hey guys, Brian from Snow Walker Bushcraft. And uh, today I was out doing a little bit of tracking. I was doing some snowshoeing with the dog, with the Opus here, Opus Bedinkus. But anyway, uh, what I wanted to do is I wanted to discuss uh, ice safety with you. Just quickly get into that discussion. Uh, and then I want to show you a this ice safety tool, which is basically known as ice claws uh, or ice picks that you can carry with you uh, when you're crossing over ice if you have any, uh, you know, as reservations about that. Uh, I don't like crossing ice. I never did like crossing ice. Um, I had the misfortune of one year actually dropping in uh, to about three and a half feet of water. Um, dropped in three of my dogs, my sled, and myself. Um, luckily, you know, obviously I was able to get out. I got the dogs out. And we're all right and uh, it actually was a true emergency at the time but the thing that uh, is kind of a, a sickening thought is what happens if it was deeper okay if it was deeper you know I don't know if I could have made it out I don't know if I would have gotten my dogs out What's up? all right so for the discussion for today as far as uh, safety wise goes if you have less than two inches of ice and I'm talking clear hard ice all right uh, it's no good okay no bueno uh, don't walk on it it's it's not good for anything uh, for you all right we uh, just as in general we're going to be talking about having four inches of ice all right um, if you have four inches of good clear ice all right it's good for you to walk on and you can do anything that you want as far as you know your ice fishing or <clears throat> crossing and you'll be fine, all right? At five inches, you can run an ATV and a snowmobile safely on it. At uh, anywhere from eight to 12 inches, you can put a, you know, a car or a small pickup truck on that ice. Um, and then when you get into the 12 to 15 inch range, you can actually put a small medium or a, a medium pickup truck and you can drive on that. But seriously, for the discussion that we're concerned about is walking, doing bushcrafting and things of that nature, we want to have at least four good inches of solid, clear ice. All right? You see something sometimes out there on the ice. It's called white ice. All right? It hasn't really completely formed. It looks like milky white substance. All right? With that, that's about half the strength of the clear ice. All right? So you're going to want to double your thicknesses. All right? If you have you know, what's known as snow ice, all right, that four inches now has to become eight inches, and then so on and so forth. Um, that's pretty much it as far as that goes. You have to be concerned with the fact of there's, uh, you know, running water currents, um, snow conditions, temperature conditions, you know, just general weather, whether it's gotten hot, whether it's gotten cold, whether there's been a breakup, a thaw, you know, overflows. <clears throat> any things of those natures and these come all into play as you're walking across ice you know you may have ice over here that's 10 inches five feet away it could be three inches all right so all that has to be taken in and you have to be aware of it all right so that's a little talk about ice safety now let's go on inside let's show you how to make those ice picks all right guys so here's our one of our ice picks that's already made all right it's nothing more than an old hockey stick that I took, you could use hardwood dowels, uh, you know, inch round dowels, uh, whatever you got, some scrap wood, you know, whatever you need to make a handle. But uh, it's about five inches long, okay? There's a hole in it. So, we'll take our second. Okay, there's our handle. Now let's drill a hole. Okay, so we drilled our hole in there. Nothing more than taking a nail. Alright, it's a basic 10 penny nail. 
All right, then we're going to hammer it into this side. Okay, we hammered in our nail. Now we're just going to get rid of the head. Okay, we cut the we cut the head off, and basically you're just going to take a file and make this into a point. <clears throat> All right, the points have been sharpened up. The only thing that you're going to do now is put a lanyard between the two. You got a little bit of faded out orange paracord here. It's something that's going to be visible that you can see when you're in need where you need to use it, and I'm just going to put a lanyard on. So there's your finished product, guys. There's your ice picks with a with a neck lanyard. Um, you can wear them around your neck as you're crossing over questionable ice if you choose to. Um, I do. Uh, if not, just put them at least in your outermost pocket where you know that you can get to them uh, as soon as possible. Um, to use them, uh, we'll use the workbench as our scenario. We're walking along the ice here. We drop in. All right, you have to try to remain as calm as you can for this situation. You know, it's asking a lot, but you do have to try to remain calm. We already know that the ice that's facing this way is the weak ice, but we know that this ice here is the strong ice. So you have to turn yourself around, and you're going to plant your ice picks, and you're going to use them kind of like the old pegboard when you were in gym class, and you're going to be walking or walking up the pegboard like this, you know, moving up the pegboard, and that's what's going to help you get out. And they should be able to dig into the ice, and it'll give you a purchase point, and it'll help you. So it's just a simple safety tool that you can use in the wintertime. Uh, this is Brian from Snowwalker Bushcraft. Thank you for your views and your comments. And until the next one, walk the woods.